Hello and welcome to Dyson Demons. I'm Emma and today I'm going to be showing you how I make stained glass windows such as this for terrain for, for instance 40k or uh, Age of Sigma or even for uh, tabletop role playing games. So uh, the main focus for this video will be the windows themselves and not the building. Um, but if you have any questions about how I actually did the building you are very welcome to leave questions in the comment section below. First off I start by drawing an outline of Ariman. I simply printed a photo of the model from the Games Workshop website and then I just start drawing an outline here. I want to make sure that people can easily recognize him when they see the terrain. So that's why I'm going with this approach. I could do all sorts of other things, but I just really really want people to be able instantaneously to know that that is Araman. So I'm trying to go with the most um, iconic outline of him and I think this is it. Doing these stained glass windows, I use Sharpies that is from a particular brand called Posca. I don't know if they are a worldwide available brand or if they're just available here. But these are Sharpies that will stick very well to plastic and stone and all sorts of other materials. So that's why I'm using them for this, uh, for this project. You'll notice that I try to stay as close to the colors of the original model as I can while also making sure that there are lots of um, interesting variations in the color scheme as well. So that's a bit of a balance. If I painted everything the same color then perhaps it would get a little bit closer to how the model is actually painted but on the other hand then it would also easily get a bit boring to look at. When choosing colors for the background, I try to go with something that will be a nice contrast to the primary colors on the uh, main image here. Uh, that means it'll stick out a bit better and also give more interest to the colors themselves. I want to do something that will make it easier to decipher what is going on in the painting, because I do know that with all these fragmented blocks of color, it can be just a tiny bit difficult for the eye to know what to focus on. So I wanted to make it as easy as possible for people to decipher the picture as soon as they see it. This is after all a terrain piece. It is meant for a gaming table. So I don't think people are going to be spending, you know, more than perhaps 30 seconds looking at each piece of terrain, if, if that much at all. So I want it to be easy to decipher. That's the main goal while also being, you know, interesting and fun to look at. You'll notice that the second model I've chosen for the cathedral is a layer from the Sisters of Silence. I think she is a very cool contrast to Araman, where he is very dynamic and he has so much going on and he's floating around on this disc and he's got all sorts of crazy colors. She is just standing there, very still, very grave, very serious, with her sword in front of her. And uh, even, her, even her uniform is in much more muted colors. And I just think that makes it very easy to see that he is a chaotic leader, whereas she is just the epitome of order. When choosing the background for Alea, I decided that I wanted it to be blue, but just with a hint of green, because I thought that would contrast nicely with the reddish colors in her armor. It would also mean that she shares one color, background color with Araman, which sort of binds them together and gives a bit of harmony to something that might otherwise be too filled with contrasts almost. At the same time, I didn't want her background just to be green like his, because then it would look like they were uh, closely aligned, which of course they most definitely are not. I'm also going to be painting designs for two smaller rounded windows and I've, go and I've chosen to go with the uh, symbol for Siege, because that represents Araman, and I've chosen to go with the symbol for the Sisters of Silence. I am using the same colors as you have in the main colors on Araman's uh, gown for the Siege symbol. Just again to make sure that it's very easy to see that the scene simple uh, signifies uh, him and not uh, Alea. 
And the same goes for the symbol for the Sisters of Silence. I've chosen to paint it in the same colors as her armor to make sure that everyone will recognize that it symbolizes her. And the same goes for the background. I've chosen the same colors as I've used for the background for each character. And lastly, I'm doing the outline in black. I love doing black outlines because that's what I think just makes the whole thing stand out and pop and make it very easy to see that now it's all done. After I'm done painting, I go outside and give the plastic a clear coating of varnish. That's to protect it when I am going to be putting the mud podge on, otherwise it will dissolve the sharpies and ruin the whole thing. So the coat of varnish is very important. Next up I get the facades for the building out. These are made in a foam board and then with a bit of uh, paper decorations water, made out of watercolor paper. Right now I'm using an oil Right now I'm using a Nolan oil to highlight some of the edges and just give some of the details a bit more definition. Then I have some spray bottles with a watercolor paint that I just spray on. When it dries the color will be much paler which means that it will give the facade a bit of, a, a bit of detail, a bit of visual interest while not grabbing the attention too much. I want the windows to be the part that stands out so I keep the colors on the facades um, pretty muted. Next up I try to match the uh, windows uh, to the window uh, frames to make sure it all fits together and then I use just a bit of super glue to attach them to the building. I always paint the uh, window glass themselves too big to make sure they will actually fit when I'm assembling the building. After it's all assembled, I have a mixture of black paint and spackle that I use to I carefully apply around the edges of the window frame. This I do for two reasons. One, I think it looks better and two, I want to make sure that the Mod Podge doesn't run out when I apply it uh, in the next step. The most nerve-wracking step is actually applying the Mod Podge to the windows. If I've done something wrong, now is the time when it will show, but now is also the time when it's almost too late to do anything about it, so if anything gets ruined now, you will have to start all over. I apply it to both windows and then I leave them to dry overnight, turn them around and apply another layer of Mod Podge to the other side of the building. When that's all done, the only thing that's uh, missing before this piece is complete is to put the two um, facades together. I just use some ordinary PVA glue and some pins to make sure that it will stay together nicely. I apply my trusty mix of black paint, a bit of water and spackle to the MDF base. I use my spatula to give it a bit of, uh, of texture. I want it to look decent, but I don't want it to be too fancy actually. I want to make sure that the thing that grabs your attention here is the window and not, uh, not the base, not the building, the windows. And then I use my spatula to make sure that the, there are no holes or lines or anything between the building and the base. After the base is dry, I take my uh, grey paint and just do a quick dry brush, just to pick out uh, some of the details of the base. And uh, that's the last step and the whole thing is done. I'm pretty pleased with the way this turned out. I must admit that I like the Araman window a bit better. I just think those very vibrant pink purple colors are perfect for this kind of thing. But I still like the Alea window as well because I think she adds a very nice bit of contrast to, to Araman. So uh, all in all I'm very pleased with the way this turned out. If you have some pieces of terrain with or without stained glass windows, or if you have some models or anything you would like to show, then uh, consider joining my Facebook group, the Dyson Demons Showroom. I will leave a link to that in the description below. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you so much. Bye.